Wake that ass up. LA's number one hip hop morning show is Nick Cannon Mornings on Power 106. Nick Cannon Radio, we going all the way up. It is uh, a privilege and an honor to have a close conversation right now. Uh, you know we only have close conversations with people that we admire, fixtures in the game, people uh-huh. that are doing big things in this Young lady is all the above and so much more. A true queen. Man, we are in the presence of an a, a author, <laughs> a, yes. an entertainer, an entrepreneur, Evelyn Lozada. How you doing, queen? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm doing good. That's you know, good. hanging in there through all the craziness that's going on. Indeed. I mean, we're doing the quarantine check-in right now. And that's what it, I've been talking to people in their homes and, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's a little awkward, but I feel like everybody's at least in the best spirits and trying to get things back to whatever this new norm is that we're yeah. all experiencing. And not only do we have to deal with the pandemic, but the civil unrest and being an election year, it's very polarizing times in our community on many different levels so how you been handling all of that oh so let's just start first because obviously there's so many things going on but let's just start first with the quarantine and you know coronavirus um you know the first couple of weeks it was it was and it still is you know it's tough you know we i have a six-year-old so homeschooling wasn't very easy i was being teacher mommy teacher you know, yes, but thank God for my sister and my niece who really, really, you know, helped through that process. And uh, But, you know, even for him, it was tough because it was like, what are we doing? He didn't want to, you know, get online. or right. So that was, that was a tough transition. Um, and then we found out that my stepfather, he ended up um, sick with corona, and then he oh. ended up passing away. So, so sorry to hear that. With, yeah, it was... You know, he lived in New York at the time. So, you know, it it was a tough time for all of us because, um, you know, we couldn't travel and, you know, we couldn't go see him. And he pretty much, you know, he passed away by himself. So we had to deal with that. And um, so, you know, just kind of we're just taking things day one time, you know, one day at a time and just trying our best to you know, adjust to, like you said, the new norm and, and, you know, not drive ourselves too crazy and, and, you know, trying to remain positive, you know, although there's so much negativity going on in the world right now. Um, and even with my son, you know, I'm raising a, a, a young, um, you know, black, a a young black boy, that's going to be, you know, a man one day. So, you know, just as a mom, it's, it's hard because uh, I don't really know, you know, I was talking to my manager. It's, I struggle with how to have these conversations with him. Indeed. Um, and so, you know, it's, 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 it's a, a lot. lot. Of talking. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah. I mean, knowing uh, all that's going on and what your family has uh, personally been through, how, as, yeah. as the matriarch is the one who holds it all together, how do you remain on that highest frequency? Because I know they're probably all looking to you like, you know, we need some type of inspiration, some type of encouragement, and that has to be a lot of weight on your shoulders. You know what, it is, um, you know, my sister and I, we're both like the matriarchs of the family, and we, we have real open and real conversations within our family. Um, we, sh- you know, I'm always really, I know it's probably hard for people to believe, but I'm pretty calm in my real, <laughs> um, life. And we just try to just remain positive, you know, pray. Um, I've been meditating a lot, which, um, really helped me so much. I, yes. That's, um, that's I even got my son meditating. My, my daughter was the one who, um, really introduced that world to me she's actually a bikram yoga teacher so she's very yogi uh-huh. um which is very different from how i grew up because i'm a new york city girl so <laughs> um you know she she introduced you know this you know uh, meditating and stuff with us so we're just you know we're just trying to you know not go crazy but you know remain positive meditation is a powerful thing when you can just sit be calm focus on your inner energy i love it now as the matriarch yeah. as as the boss you you're continuing just to put stuff out there that's uh generating the right type of attention uh another book which is so yeah. dope and, and this one is titled the wrong mr darcy uh 
one I want because I mean as a as a fellow <laughs> author and and someone who kind of even writes in the space of of fiction or even uh romantic novels I believe your first one was uh um about uh a single mom with an athlete and then this one is kind of like a part two of that is that how it's working out yeah, so um, a lot of the, so this is my third book. The, the book before this was The Perfect Date. And then my first, first book, which came out years ago, was The Inner Circle. And one of the things that I make sure, I want the re the readers to feel like they're connected to my real life. Um, there are a lot of stories that I put in the books that, you know, things I really did experience in. Wow. So these are these are truly autobiographical tales. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, um, but they're always like romantic, you know, um, beach reads. Um, so, you know, I love, you know, being able to, you know, write books like that, that, you know, you can kind of just, you know, get into and, and, and um, you know, just have fun with it. So, um, so yeah, so it's, it's been, it's been fun. Now, you know, e putting those together. even though the, the books are, are kind of uh, a storytelling from a, a first person perspective, is there anything that you feel like the reader will gain, like maybe even in some words of advice or how to maneuver out here uh, in this new age as, as a single person dating, you know, in, in this whole new oh, there's world. A, there's so, with, with the perfect date, she was, you know, she was Puerto Rican from the Bronx. I'm Puerto Rican from the Bronx. So, you know, and I was a single mom. I was a teenage mother. Um, I had my daughter at 17. So, you know, it was it was a difficult period in my time, just really trying to figure it out, you know, um, worried as to, okay, so how am I going to take care of this child, but also get myself out of the Bronx? Right. Um, you know, so, you know, a lot of that I put in the books, you know, there's a lot of life less lessons, um, a lot of relationship advice. Lord, Lord knows I could give those. Right. But, um, so, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I put a lot of my personal experiences and the things that I've gone through um, in, in these books. And in the new book, uh, the, the wrong Mr. Darcy has the, the plot of like the pride and prejudice vibe where uh, it's it's you almost have a perspective uh, or the characters almost have a perspective of each other. And then they find out that clearly they were, they were wrong about the You can't judge a book by its cover type of her. Where did that, yeah. where did that storyline come from? Is that something that you really went through or is that just more just writing? No, I feel like I deal with that all the time. You know, um, people feel like, I mean, I don't know if, if, if you deal with that sometimes, but I feel because, you know, of the reality TV that I've done, and certain things that have happened, people feel like they know you. Oh yeah, off top, absolutely. Yeah, so it's like you can't judge a book by its cover because really at the end of the day, you don't really know that person until you really get to know them. Right. So I deal with that all the time. You know, people meet me and are like, wow, you're really, really cool. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I am. Like, man, you didn't that. even throw a drink at me. This is crazy. <laughs> you are so nice. <laughs> exactly. So it was like, you know, I get that a lot. So I feel like, you know, first impressions, you know, it, it, you have to really get to know somebody. So, yes, in this book, the, the characters, they really judged each other based off of that first impression. Right. Which, you know, they find out that they, you know, they they had the wrong first impression, which right. we tend to get a lot. So, um, but, yeah, I do deal with that, you know, a lot. <laughs> so then I have to, because I know in the book, the character, Mr. Darcy, he's, a, he's a, like a cocky young, young athlete. Uh, and then, you know, ultimately won't give it away or whatever, but it's just based off of you find that even with the guys, they may come off one one way, but then they actually end up being, you know, soft, lovable uh, teddy bears <laughs> or, 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 or men that you can maneuver however you wish to maneuver. Is that something that, I mean, obviously we, we've seen some of, you know, your your public situations. It, is that yeah. something that really, like in the book, is it the character is like, yo, I'm going to, he he's going to bow down to me. I don't care how cocky or how cool he think he is. At the end of the day, I run this. Yeah, you know, um, kind of, I feel like, you know, when, for example, you know, not to get too much into my uh, relationship with my ex, but even meeting him, he's a very, very strong personality. Right. So I'm um, very strong personality, you know, tatted, he looks a certain way, but you know, he's until you get to know him, he's a, he's a really, really, you know, good person. So, um, 
yes, you know, I feel like that is definitely um, some of the traits where I connected that, you know, um, character to. Because we, because uh, I was checking it out and reading, it and I was like, yo, we talk about that so often on yes. on the uh, on our show because people, like you said, it's perception. People may see yeah. you on TV or even they see you're an athlete or an entertainer. They think a certain way, and it takes so much time to get to the core of who the person is because. One, we always offer up our representative when we first meet someone. And then right. it's almost like a jousting thing. It's like, I got on my armor, you got on your armor. So at what point in a relationship do people actually really get to that? Like, all right, this is who I really am. These are my vulnerable issues. These are the things that I'm growing through. This is how I think we can make each other better. Is that like, when does that occur uh, as someone who's dealt with uh, a lot of these alpha males or even it, just relationships in general with, with Yeah, men. I think that you definitely have to get to know somebody um, for at least, this is just from my personal experience, at least seven months. Wow, you know, the seven first, months? I feel, yes, I feel like the first three months are all fluff. You know, you get to know somebody. You so you don't know the person really until like a half a year in. Like <laughs> and like, that's who your ass is. I feel like half a year is when you really get to know somebody. That's when they, you know, put their guard down and are really open and comfortable having you know, certain Shoot. conversations, you know. Um, you I ain't got that much time, Evelyn. I, I get married and divorced in the first half year. <laughs> Listen, I was divorced. My first marriage lasted 43 days. So <laughs> I don't think no one has me beat at this point. <laughs> I, but that's like to me as someone considering themselves a, a hopeless romantic. Or, I love the idea yeah. of love. But what I've learned is that I'm pretty much I'm not cut out for the relationship aspect. So I'm all with the, the romantic novel approach of like the, the dinners, the 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 long walks in the park, the sunsets. I love all of that. But when it comes to like you said, once you get into them six months, we're like, yo, we gotta live together. Yo, we gotta like right. we got that's when it actually gets, you know, difficult yeah. and being people who've lived life already, having children, having our lives already set in the way that we want. To step into something and say, yo, I'm going to rock and do this with someone wholeheartedly and you a part of my life and I'm a part of your life. That's where I get scared. I'm not going to front. That's where it's like, OK, yeah. this is a little too much. I love the fun. I love the aspect of let's be whimsical. Let's let's have the fantasy. But if we really like talking about changing each other's lives, like what, what would be your advice for, for someone struggling in that in that world? Well, I just I feel like maybe you see i'm more of a relationship type you right. know i prefer to be in relationships you know why <laughs> why because i love i i love the sh i love structure i i you I love two. owning somebody you love saying this is mine no, i love being <laughs> with one person you know and unfortunately it hasn't worked out because that person didn't love being with one person. <laughs> but so, so have you found somebody that loves just being with one person? Because as we, we no. have this conversation all the time, like men don't subscribe to monogamy because they feel like it's not natural in in, in their in their makeup in the, in their DNA. They feel like they're, they're hunting. That it's it's, it's that hunting yeah. mentality, but it's yeah. also in like, yo, if we're supposed to be fruitful and multiply, if we're here to do this, like there's there's not many creatures on earth that are monogamous. So when you see a man who's always hunting and on the prowl until he right. old and tired, that's right. <laughs> like he gonna be out there, you know, at least those the at least those pheromones are still gonna be, you know, triggering off. Yeah, no, I ha I've been single for three years, so I can't really say that I have found that person. <laughs> Um, but I, I feel like there are men out there that are, you know, that want to be old like, men that don't nobody this. want. That's Maybe I have to go older, but that, no, I, you that, get you a 75 year old with one leg. and <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think he needs to be 75, but you know, usually I attract younger guys. Yeah. Like the, the, in I the mean, book, the, the Darcy character, he's younger. Yes. And right. That's what my reality is, too. You know, I attract a lot of younger guys. So, you, you know, know what comes with that? Yes, it's just that's that's why I don't take it serious. You know, <laughs> I don't take I don't, you know, smart. I mean, woman. Some of these guys are younger than my my daughter. My daughter is 27 years old. So, well, how you know, is that? And you you open to like dating guys that are younger than your, your daughter? 
No. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I don't <laughs> oh. think it's serious. E- so no. even though they trying to holler at you, you like, little boy, please. I got kids your age. Yeah, and I, and I, you know, I have to think about what my daughter is gonna think. You know, like, what am I doing with this guy that's young? That should be folks? that should be the plot of your next book. That would I be think a, so. that should that's be. fire. <laughs> like a twenty-five-year-old dude comes to the game. He's everything that a woman could ever want. But your daughter's twenty-six and she knows him, and you're like, ah, I don't <laughs> that's know. Actually- Yes, that's actually really, really good. So I'm going to um, make a mental note of that. <laughs> well, I, I, I commend everything that you're doing and, and the way that you've handled this world. I mean, being somebody who a lot of us were introduced through the world of reality television and for you to build your own empire and, and from being an author to an entrepreneur. I got I got a whole box of, of products. Uh, <laughs> That I, they were, we were like, we have to send him everything. We need to send the earrings. We need to send the skincare. We need to send everything. Listen, I, I'm just, I'm trying to make the most, you know, out of my reality TV life. And reality TV is not going to be here forever. At some point, I am going to say bye bye. Um, and that's just the reality of it. You know, I want to be able to, I mean, just like you, you know, have different streams of income. And, and I'm a single mom. So, you know, I'm just trying to do the best that I can and, and, and make the most out of, you know, that opportunity because that helps this. There know? it is. Well, Queen, we give you your flowers while you can still smell them. Keep doing what you do. Uh, I can't wait for the new book. It's out in August. And even though uh, we do give you your flowers, we still got to put you in the hot seat. This is uh, oh, a segment shit. on the club. But you got this. This is this is light work. This is oh, okay. nothing invasive. This is just really getting into your head. Psychological and philosophical questions, but they're all fun. You can ask answer them rapidly or you could take your time there's no right okay. or wrong way to answer these and we always start off with an icebreaker uh about love and fear it's a psychological study that shows there's only two real emotions love and fear and every other emotion stems from that and the italian philosopher nico machiavelli put it the best he said if you can't be loved then you might as well be feared so what's more important to you love or fear um that's an easy one love See now, people might see people who might watch you on them shows. You're like, oh, she she like to walk in the room and be the boss. She want everybody to be scared of her, but you you just want to be loved. I just want to be loved, but I'm really a softy, and you know, inside of this tough Bronx Puerto Rican girl exterior, you know, um, I love love, and and there it um, is. you know, that's I, I I would choose love over fear any day. All right, so we'll go here. Speaking of fear, what's Evelyn's greatest fear? Uh, my greatest fear is not being here for my kids. Wow. Spoken like a true yeah. matriarch. I, I love As it. As a parent, I think that that's always a scary idea. You have kids, right? Yes. So it's like, what would my kids do if I was not here? Because I feel like, yes, they have fathers, and I know their fathers love them to death. But we have such a close bond that I'm like, God, please you know, keep me on earth until they're, you know, able to just do, you know, just live life and not be truly affected without me being here. So hopefully I'm like 90, but that that is definitely my greatest fear is just not being here for my kids. Well, you you, you got to be around for a long time. You got that strong spirit and you hold them <laughs> down. So we you don't have to fear that at all. Now, what, uh, in your opinion, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, the best piece of advice I ever received, um, was to just because to love yourself, to Mm. love yourself, honor yourself. I think, you know, um, a lot of us women that grew up, um, and not to get super deep and, you know, sad, but, you know, um, I grew up without a dad. So I feel like I grew up not feeling loved. And because of that, I made a lot of wrong decisions. And, um, so I feel you know, with therapy and and everything that I went through, that was one of the main things is just to really love yourself and honor yourself. Nobody's going to love you and honor your, 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 your body, yourself like you. So um, that was probably the best thing. And that was from Iyanla. I heard that. She will fix, she she will fix your life. (laughs) She really did. You know, I know she gets, I know sometimes people are like, Oh my God, she's a lot, but she, we're still connected to this day. And um, I am so grateful for, her taking the time to really, you know, um, talk to me and just to work out through, you know, certain things that happened when I was younger. So she's been, she's been amazing. That's powerful. Now, what's the worst piece of advice you've ever received? 
Um, the worst piece of advice was probably to sleep with your bra on. Oh, <laughs> really? Is that yes. just because of the pain, or is it just like just not? I don't know. I just like the stupid things that people. Because it keep you it keep them up sleep. if you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a stupid piece of advice. I don't know why that came to my mind first. <laughs> that's hilarious. I love it. All right, you're on an island and you're uh, stranded, but you can only take three items. What are the three items you're taking? The three items I'm taking, uh, my phone. Okay. I could take my phone, right? Of course. You take, it's your island. You do whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> so my phone, um, uh, shit, what else? A book. Your book, gotta take. Yeah, <laughs> let's take, let's take the book. newest one. Let's take the wrong book. Mr. Darcy. <laughs> can I take people with me? You could. It's your island. This is the study oh. of your mind. You can do whatever oh, you, you know want. What? Let me rewind. Let me. Uh, only three things. Okay, so I'll save my phone and my kids. There it is. Uh, that makes Trump, perfect. You, we gotta take the book out because <laughs> my kids have to come. The book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> put put the book on the boat. We'll do that now. Uh, what's uh Evelyn Lozada's guilty pleasure uh my guilty pleasure is i'm so boring uh, my guilty pleasure is probably working out yes you do a lot we we see the fitness videos and stuff like that so are you like one of those people that just Look like addicted arms, to? i see i see you cut up this is this is my quarantine I arms i've been listen i've been working out in the i've been working out here i have a gym in my garage I said, I feel like I'm working out for a pageant. But yeah, that's my guilty pleasure. I love working out. My daughter is Miss Fitness. So it's like I'm trying to keep up with her. And um, so, yeah, that's my guilty pleasure. I, you know, through this quarantine, it's what's helped me kind of just stay sane and uh, motivated. So, um, yeah. And, you know, probably uh, carbs, like anything, potatoes and rice. I heard that. I heard that. Now, <laughs> got to ask you this. What's uh, your greatest accomplishment? Evelyn's greatest accomplishment. My greatest accomplishment would be my children. Yeah, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. that my babies yeah. are, you know, my everything. Um, my daughter, we're very, 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 very close. That's like my best friend. We grew up together. So I can't Yeah, I see that on your daughter. IG. Like y'all are always together, out together. And like, ha what if, like that has to almost like, now you got like a built-in best friend that <laughs> that you designed. Yeah, well, it's, and my kids are 21 years apart because I, yeah. she was 21. I had my son. So my son's now six. So, and now, he, and he's a boy. So it's like, it's two different worlds. So with her, I'm able to go to Soho house and have martinis. <laughs> right. With him, we're like at baseball games getting dirty. So, but you know, I feel like, you know, I always tell her, we have these conversations all the time. I'm like, if it wasn't for you guys, I have no idea where my life would be because they really give me purpose. You know, it's like giving up and failing is never an option, um, regardless of what's been thrown at me. So I'm always like, okay, we're about to figure this shit out and we're going to keep it pushing because, you know, I know they look up to me. So wow. Yeah, now, speaking of yeah. figuring it out and having a, a daughter in her twenties and, you know, I'm, she's probably, you've been through everything that she's going through. Do you just let her have it? Or do you give like advice like, look, I've been where you've been. I've been, I know what what's coming. And, and what are those conversations like? You know, for the most part, I let her have it because she's very, she has a good head on her shoulders. Um, She's such a good, just a beautiful spirit and just a really great person. But whenever I feel like if she is struggling with something or she's talking to me about whether it's a relationship or, you know, um, work, you know, I give her, you know, real girlfriend advice. Uh, we've always, even in high school, when, you know, in high school, you're figuring out yourself and, you know, that's when kids are, you know, wanting to explore sex. And right. so oh. I, I, I've always had these open, real conversations with her about just everything. Cause, oh. you know, I feel like sometimes your friends in high school aren't, you know, they're not going to give you the best advice, but you know, we we're good. So she didn't, you know, she didn't come out to, you know, she didn't have a baby at 17. So I'm proud of that. And um, so, yeah, so we're very, very open and transparent with each oh, other. Oh, you are scaring me. I do not want to have those conversations with my daughter. That's it. I know, but That's you it. have to. I guess, no, but see, like, I, I always emphasize uh, honesty. 
and, and let yeah. her know that she could tell me anything. And and I give my daughter the game. I'm like, look, look, your dad is not perfect. This is what I've done. And I, I so I'm never going to judge you. So right. and, and we kind of do it that way. I mean, she's nine right, right now. But, oh, man, we you it just, goes so fast, though, Nick. Right. Because, like, can't you believe like you're like, wow, I got a nine year old. Like, yeah. It's crazy. It, it, it goes so fast. Like, I can't even believe my daughter is 27. I'm just like, it just, it's mind blowing. Yeah, and that's grown, grown. So, okay, we only doing research for the book right now. We're still in the middle of the yeah. fire squad, but I have this question. Uh, yeah. At 27, have you and your daughter ever had, like, been attracted to the same guy or known, like, hey, I know, wait, why do you know him? Are you, like, any, has any of that occurred and how do you deal with that? No, we've never been attracted to the same guy. But you said these young boys be trying to holler at you. No, but I will say we've had some of the same guys reach out to us in our DMs. So it's like, <laughs> I'm like, really? He reached out to you? He reached out to me too? So we tend to have that. How weird is that, right? That is, I'm te- that's a book. That's the next book right there. I'm just like, oh my God. But you know what? She's, I'm. Well, no, she's kind of all over the place with with, with her type. You know, <laughs> I like a more like kind of rugged kind of guy. Right, she right, was, right. You know, her ex boyfriend was European. You know oh, what I mean? Oh yeah. So, you know, um, but yeah, we've never been attracted to the same guy. Not that I know of, but it's always funny and interesting when we share. I always tell her she could write a book with the dms that she has like wow. it's insane but i'm pretty sure you could too because i mean even that just to know that the same guys that are trying to holler at your 20 something year old daughter are in your dm that got to make you feel good i mean it does but it's also weird at the same time you know there's <laughs> like this there's a surgeon in new york and he was like oh my he had he had dms me he was like i would love to my God, I would love to take out your daughter. And then it went from Whoa. wanting to take her out to then wanting to take me out. And I told him, didn't you, you know, didn't you want to take out my daughter? Like, it's just weird. I'm just like, yo, this. I'm telling you for <laughs> this new age, that is a book and a half right there. <laughs> I now, got it. I'm going to work on that for sure. And since we still still talking about it, uh, biggest mistake ever. We, we talked about your greatest accomplishment. What's your biggest mistake? You know, my biggest mistake is, um, how can I, my biggest mistake is ignoring red flags Mm. in a relationship that I knew was toxic from the beginning, you know? Um, So I think that that relationship and the things that I ignored were my biggest mistake because it, 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 and, you know, it ultimately ended up really bad. Um, So that was one of the things because I had so many red flags thrown at me. I had people tell me certain things that I ignored because I thought, oh, okay, they were just maybe jealous about my relationship. But in reality, people were really trying to look out. And um, so I I think my biggest mistake is, you know, just not listening to what was being told to me and ignoring those big red flags that I did ignore. And I, I, I hear you. All right, Evelyn Lozada's favorite cuss word. I have a few. <laughs> Say like, that shit. Fuck you. Like, fuck you, you stupid bitch. You oh, the Bronx bitch. just came out real quick. You bum bitch. <laughs> bum um, bitch. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm a new year. I, uh, it's funny because my realtor, she's uh, she's from my church, right? And she baptized me. <laughs> she baptized me maybe like a year ago now. So, now that I'm trying to look for like a new house or whatever, um, sometimes like I I, I want to curse all the time, so I have to tell her like I'm sorry, like this I like I know the bap- the baptism ain't work all the way. I still got some, <laughs> still got to tell these bum bitches about they self. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, but yeah, those are like my favorite go tos. Nah, I, I I'm not mad at it right there. That's and of course we're in the midst of the firing squad having having fun. But I have to to ask you you this as well. Your first or worst job ever? My first job, I was 14 years old and I was working at a clothing store in Hunts Point in the Bronx. Wow, retail. Um, so I was, yeah, I was doing retail. Um, you know, listen, my mother wasn't giving me no money for school lunch and stuff. So I had to figure, I had to figure this shit out. Facts. But, um, that was probably, that was my first job. Um, 
I can't really say I had any bad, bad jobs, you know, yeah. um, you know, I worked for an attorney. I worked for Kenny Mysalis, who puffs, who's puffs attorney. Oh, yeah, Kenny used friend. to be my lawyer back in the day, too. Really? <laughs> yeah. So I worked with Kenny for like s several years in my early 20s. So, um, you know, that was a fun job because there were all types of like craziness going on. In the yeah, I, I can imagine. But, um, prior to that, I. You know, worked in a hair salon. I did retail, so yeah. Always I, I knew was, how to get to the bag. Wasn't never scared of hard I, work. Listen, I didn't want to go back on welfare, so I was like, I need to figure it out. That's that's real rap right there. And since we're talking about bosses right now, we do the top five on Nick Cannon Radio all the time. I need to know since you are are a true boss, self made in your own right, and you don't play that shit. I need to know the top female bosses that you are inspired by. If you had to say top female bosses in the game, who would that be? Top female bosses. From any um, walk of life. Any walk of life. So it could be an artist. Yeah, yeah, um, whatever. Top female. But it could so be Oprah, whoever. Definitely, I, um, this is probably just because we're from the same place, Jennifer Lopez. Ooh. I feel like she's been able to take herself from the boogie down Bronx and have been able to accomplish so, so, much. so many things. Strong boss um, right there. Talented boss. Um, Talented boss. Obviously, Michelle Obama. I love Ooh. her. I feel like she's such a class act. Forever first um, lady right there. Yeah, the first lady. I'm inspired by just her grace and, and, and you know, how just everything that she represents. Yep. Um, who else? Um, Three more. How you starting three. off good, though? You got J-Lo and Michelle Obama. That's, that's, that's strong. Michelle Obama. Who else? Who else? Um... Oprah. Of course. O Oprah for sure. Gotta do, um, gotta do I that. I had my own show on her network. I never forget sitting next to her and having wine and thinking to myself, am I'm, I really sitting here? I'm with next Oprah? to Oprah. How is that? Because we, we often ask that a lot of times too. Like, is there a moment where you feel like, I cannot believe I am next to this person? Like, meeting Oprah. I embarrassed the shit out of myself when I met Oprah for the first time. Listen, <laughs> I did too. My daughter was like, what did you just say to her? <laughs> I, I don't even remember. I was literally like, oh, la, 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 la. And I don't get like that about many people, you yeah. know, like I can meet anybody and I'm pretty cool. But, you know, it was such a like, oh, my God, I'm like sitting here with Oprah. So, yeah, I, I had like I had anxiety. Yeah, I started I started doing lines from the color purple when I met her and she just rolled her eyes at me. Like you told Harpo to beat me. She didn't think yes, that shit was funny so at was all. Definitely <laughs> like, oh, my God, like that is so um crazy yeah and we were sitting there having like a full-on conversation so, that's dope now um, she's definitely down to earth she cool people yeah she is she really really is um gosh two more two doing? more you gotta put um, yourself on there come on okay i'll put myself on there i'll put myself on there there it is and then um, the one last boss i would say shawnee i'll say because we're good friends and okay. I, see, I watch how she shawnee's very boss shawnee o'neal you know? that's what i'm talking about Shawnee O'Neal, listen, I don't know how this woman, I had talked to her the other day. I said, I don't know how you do this. You know, she's the EP creator of our show. Yep. She has five kids. Um, What, three or four of them are going to college. So, yeah. you know, just to balance everything that she balances on top of, you know, her brand that she has and the things that she's working on. Indeed. So I would definitely say she's 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 a boss. And she's such a good person. I know sometimes she, you know, we get a, you know, a little bad rap sometimes because of the show, but she's a really, really good person. So, hey, ain't uh, nothing wrong with it. Y'all all bosses, and I love to see it, and I love to see y'all shining and uplifting one another. So uh, this is how we always end the firing squad. Uh, when we talk legacy, your journey, we've seen it. We've seen you elevate. We've seen you grow. When it's all said and done, what's going to be that one word that describes Evelyn at the end of the day? Determined. Hmm. There it is, ladies and I gentlemen. Feel, yeah, I, I want my kids to always know that I was determined. Well, here, here you have it. It's been an up-close-and-personal conversation with the one and only determined queen, Evelyn Lozada. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Nick. I really appreciate you. Thank you. No doubt. No doubt.